I think the, uh, the concept of targeting the blood vessels that supply cancer uh, has actually been around for a very long time. And it's really only in the last few years that we've had some drugs available to target that very process. And bevacizumab uh, is a humanized monoclonal antibody that is probably furthest down the line in clinical development. Uh, the Avado trial is the second large randomized study uh, which really now confirms that we're, we're more likely to be able to control the patient's breast cancer by adding bevacizumab to chemotherapy. And the length of time for which we can control that disease is also increased. And so I think in terms of controlling a patient's tumor burden and the symptoms that that might be creating for that patient, then I think there are distinct advantages to adding bevacizumab to chemotherapy. What we've been presenting at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium this year are the final data on the Avado study, which again confirm an improvement in uh, tumor control, what we call progression-free survival. Uh, in this presentation, we, we've also observed that there is no difference in overall survival. So like uh, the other two studies that have been presented, uh, perhaps a little disappointingly, while we're impacting on tumor control, we're not yet doing that to a degree that influences overall survival of these patients. I think it's worth remembering, though, that in the Avado study, um, there were quite a proportion of patients who had chemotherapy on its own for their first-line treatment as part of the trial, but then had the opportunity to have bevacizumab with their second-line chemotherapy. And so it's possible, therefore, that that crossover in subsequent lines of treatment may have confounded uh, any effect that we might have seen on overall survival. And indeed, there's another presentation at this year's San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium looking at exactly that, the use of bevacizumab as second-line chemotherapy treatment, using it in addition to that. And that, again, uh, demonstrably from this study, improves progression-free survival. So it seems very likely that uh, because we did allow some patients to cross over, which I think was ethically exactly the right thing to do, we may have confounded an overall survival signal. I think in general terms, though, it, it's still pretty clear that while we've demonstrated a proof of principle for using anti-angiogenic approaches in breast cancer, there is still obviously a long way to go, and there are other targets, particularly with respect to angiogenesis, that are now in clinical development.